Welcome to The Debrief, where we talk with the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the headlines they're covering this week and where the story's going next. I'm Sarah Westwood, and I'm here today with commentary editor Con Carroll. And Con, House Republicans promised a lot leading up to their retaking the House majority that they were going to take on big tech as one of their first agenda items. Uh, you wrote a piece this week that one of the earliest moves from House Republicans seems like something of a surrender to Google and Facebook. What was that? Yeah, I mean, you have a Republican Party is a time in flux. They're, you know, kind of rethinking their identity. A lot of them want to become a working class party. And so one of the ideas that uh, Jim Banks had when he wrote a memo t to Kevin McCarthy was to take on big tech. And one of the ways to do that was through pursuing new hard um, Wait, you know, hardcore antitrust policies. Mm -hmm. And so, um, just as it happened to be, the uh, representative lined up to head up the antitrust subcommittee in the Judiciary Committee was Representative Ken Buck from Colorado. And he's written a book um, on how to take on big tech, and he had three specific bills that would have attacked big tech, would have taken apart Google's um, advertisement monopoly in the digital space, would have taken apart both Apple and Google's ability to dominate their own um, app stores, um, and also would have been able to uh, take on, b allow journalists, allow uh, smaller publications to come together and bargain collectively to take away advertising revenue from Google and Facebook. So this is a very uh, aggressive agenda to take on big tech, and he was lined up to be the chairman of the antitrust subcommittee, but then Jim Jordan and uh, Kevin McCarthy decided to push him away, take him off the antitrust subcommittee, and put in Thomas Massey, who is a great guy, um, he's a libertarian, so he just he just not has does not have any ideas, does not want to be aggressive on the big tech uh, antitrust space at all. So this is a complete missed opportunity by the Republicans to get tough on big tech and show Americans that they're ready to take on power of powerful companies, corporations like Google and Facebook. Was that an intentional move by leadership? I mean, do you think that they were? Counseled by lobbyists, potentially industry oh, people, is, not this to is, put this him. This is absolutely intentional. Uh, you know, Google um, has given tons of money to Jim Jordan. Um, his staff has come in and out of Google's uh, uh, payroll. So this is a move that absolutely was driven by the big tech companies themselves. Are there any meaningful proposals uh, on the table for House Republicans right now to take on big tech? Not, not on the antitrust front. No. So shifting gears a little bit, the Examiner also wrote this week about. Uh, the approach that El Salvador has taken to lowering its very high homicide rate, it's actually not a, a lawless wasteland of murder, which I thought it was before I read this piece. So, so tell us about what happened. Well, in your defense, it used to be. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, part of the reason why um, we have the border crisis because so many people were coming up from El Salvador because it was so violent there. So uh, just a couple years ago, uh, about 100 people out of 100,000 were being murdered every year in El Salvador. And to put that in perspective, here in D.C., where the murder has gone up, we have about 30 people per year that are being murdered per 100,000. Um, and you can see how violent it is here, but it was way worse in El Salvador. But then you had a, a new president come in. He was elected, um, President Gulaiki. Um, close. And you probably, close you're enough. circling it. Um, so he didn't come from the traditional left-wing party in El Salvador, nor the traditional right-wing party of El Salvador. He was a centrist business, businessman who had been mayor of San Salvador for a number of years, and he got elected on an uh, anti-crime platform. And what he started was admittedly a draconian crackdown on gangs, particularly MS-13 in El Salvador. Now, you know, they suspended the right to counsel. Uh, for defendants, which we would never want to do here, mm -hmm. and they suspended the uh, right to b not be in jail. It's, it's in a bail also. And you know these are things that we should not have in our own country, but the idea that if you do incarcerate these gang members and keep them behind bars, the results speak to themselves. The murder rate has gone in the Salvador from, again, that 100 per 100,000 level down to eight, just eight uh, murder per year per 100,000 people in uh, El Salvador. That is a miraculous cut in crime and the populace just loves the president. They feel safe. It is a complete transformation of the country. And you know we're not going to want to uh, you know suspend people's right to counsel, obviously. Right. But when we're looking at what to do about crime, we really need to look into the very basic uh, tactic of locking people up who are in these gangs who are committing these crimes and not letting them back out to commit more crimes. Well, Khan, thank you so much for being here today. You can get more writing from Khan and the rest of the commentary team at WashingtonExaminer.com.